The photo diode amplifier combined with Howland current source current inverter is discussed in this circuit analysis example, which is the 210th video in the analog circuit playlist. As a part of sensor amplifier sensor signal conditioning at the input of this circuit is a photo diode that is receiving optical energy and then the job of the first stage, first top amp stage, is achieving two things. One, using a 3 volt Zener diode, it provides the proper uh, reverse BIOS voltage for the photodiode so that it operates correctly. And then second, using the potentiometer 10 kilo ohm nominal in this case, it provides a variable adjustable gain for the first stage for the voltage at the output of the first stage. Then in the second stage of the circuit, we have effectively a Howland a current source current inverter that we want to see how it works and then we want to compute the output current providing provided to a reference load or desired load and uh, we want to compute that so that is the big picture of how the circuit is operating let's just uh, quickly analyze the circuit let's make the assumption that both up amps are properly biased for example plus minus five volt supply voltage is applied and then we can uh, just make the conclusion that as you can see output of the first stage connected to the inverting or negative terminal so first stage clearly in negative feedback and uh, the second stage uh, which is having uh, basically both uh, negative and positive feedback but then we make the assumption that with proper design negative feedback is dominant so with negative feedback dominant we uh, make the assumption that both op amps in linear region of operation so both op amps operating in linear region not saturated so as a result we can make the assumption that a virtual short is valid for both op amp which means the voltage at the negative and positive term input terminal for the op amp should be uh, the same so that is the property of virtual short okay so uh, Look at the positive terminal of op amp one connected to effectively DC bias setup, which is using a three volts in a diode. Effectively, because of hundred kilo ohm resistor R in the second stage, the current that can flow uh, from the second stage uh, would be very small, on the order of uh, let's say you're talking about a few hundred micro uh, amp. So that is negligible compared to what we can get from 5 volt via 200 ohm and then toward the 3 volt which is the main route for the uh, DC current bias for the Zener diode. So effectively if Zener diode is operational the 3 volt uh, should appear here at the positive input terminal of the op amp first stage and then therefore the voltage drop across 200 ohm is plus minus 2 volt. So as a result uh, the uh, DC current as a let's say DC bias current for the Zener diode is easily computed which is IZ equal to the 2 volt voltage drop so basically 5 minus 3 and then divide by 200 ohm we are talking about uh, IZ being on the order of 10 milliamp which is a decent uh, DC bias current for the Zener diode to make sure it has a stable voltage okay that's good now because of virtual short then uh, since there is 3 volt at the positive terminal there should be 3 volt at the negative terminal of uh, the first stage as well so that 3 volt serves as the reverse voltage bias for the photodiode so that it operates properly now as the optical energy is being received then uh, the photodiode generates a current which we refer to it as I photodiode and this current is uh, usually between say in this design of course it depends on the type of environment and type of optical diet but then let's make the assumption reasonable assumption that it is between 1 milliamp uh, on the high side and let's say 10 nanoamp on the order of 10 nanoamp on the low side then at the same time let's name this 10 kilo ohm uh, let's say variable resistor or potential meter as RP uh, which is then there by the definition of nominal 10 kilo ohm is an variable resistor between 10 kilo ohm and uh, as low as theoretically zero ohm. okay so this current generated by the photodiode can only go through the 10 kilo ohm nominal potentiometer and uh, then toward the output so it's coming from output toward the photodiode reason for that is there is no there is no current that can go through the input terminal of op amp because of effectively infinite a practical practically impedance at the negative terminal 
Okay, so with that, uh, then we know the output voltage, which let's refer to it as voltage V2 at the output of the first stage, which is also the voltage that is here via this wire, so V2 here. So we can compute that there. So let's do so. That second voltage, V2, uh, so first voltage is V1 at the, at the uh, let's say, on, on Zener diode, so that V1 is here. Then uh, V1 is obviously th 3 volt, so that's Vz. We can say V1 is Vz, voltage of Zener diode is 3 volt, so that's the first equation. And we have V2 equal to, uh, we're going to write just the, effectively we use KCL here, uh, so there is no current, so the current coming in is equal to the current going out at this node, but then we have to write a KVL across this route. So let's do so. So using uh, Kirchhoff voltage law KVL, we have V2 equal to, uh, there is the photodiode, 3 volt. And then we have the voltage drop across 10K uh, potentiometer, which is then uh, the current of photodiode times the Nomen the value of the potentiometer RP. So V2 equal to 3 volt plus IPD times RP. That's equation number two. Okay, so let's now that we're done with the first stage, let's do the quick analysis for the second stage, the Howland uh, current source current inverter with the two input voltages that we found. So let's do so. I'm going to write quick KVL. So first thing, let's name the voltage at the positive terminal and the negative terminal of the second op amp using virtual short. There should be the same voltage, so let's name it as voltage Vx. I'm going to write it here, Vx and Vx. Let's also name the voltage at the output of the second stage as voltage V3. And let's name the voltage at the very output of the circuit as Vout. Uh, when we tar the target is finding I out, of course, that is uh, being provided to the resistor, load resistor RL. Okay, so let's write a couple of uh, KVL, KCL here. We have the current I1 going this way, of course, for the same reason that there is no current going through the input terminal of op amp. So there is no current because of infinite input impedance for uh, input terminal of op amp. Then there is a current I1. We're going to make the assumption that goes this way. And there is current I2. I'm going to make the assumption that it goes this way. Okay, so now let's just write. So we have, of course, current. Uh, we can write current I1 is equal to uh, Vx minus V1 divided by R. 100 kilo ohm nominal. So the capital R is 100 kilo ohm nominal and it's repeated four times in the circuit and then small letter R the resistor at the output or connected to the output of the second stage is a small resistor 1 kilo ohm nominal so I1 is uh, Vx minus V1 divided by R so Vx minus V1 divided by R that's equation one uh, or we can just write it this way effectively so let's write it as uh, Vx minus V1 equal to I1R. Okay, so the second equation I can write is here at the bottom. Here, uh, let's say at the lower side of the circuit, V2 minus Vx is Ri2. So V2 minus Vx is uh, I2 times R. So I2 times R. And then let's add these two together. So add them together. Uh, the nice thing is Vx cancel out with Vx, so we're going to get V2 minus V1 is equal to I1 plus I2 times R. And as a result, I can summarize the whole thing as I1 uh, plus I2 is equal to V2 minus V1 over R. Okay, so let's keep this as equation number 3. Now let's, almost done, actually, circuit uh, is uh, with sort of a right approach is quickly analyzable. So let's write a KVL from V3 uh, toward V1 to find the value of V3. So we have KVL or Kirchhoff voltage law. So we have V3, the voltage at the output of the second stage is equal to V1 uh, plus, we have voltage drop across 
these resistors that they are effectively in series uh, with current I1 passing through them. So I'm, I'm going to write 2R plus R times I1. Okay, let's also find V out as a function of V2 and the voltage drop across these two series resistor effectively. So I can write again another K KVL effectively here. So V out is equal to V2 minus so V out is equal to V2 minus, and then we have uh, 2R times I2. Okay, so I'm going to, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract V3 and second, second equation from the first one. So V3 minus V out uh, equal to subtracting. So we have V1 minus V2, and then we have... 2R, I1 plus I2, and then we have RI1. Okay, so the nice thing is, as you can see here, RI1, uh, R times I1 plus I2 is V2 minus V1. That's exactly what we have here. So, therefore, uh, I can combine them together, and as a result of combining them together, these two together will end up to be just, uh, don't forget about that factor 2, so end up to be V2 minus V1. So effectively, as a result, what I get is V3 minus V out equal to V2 minus V1 plus Ri1. Let's name this as equation number 4. We are almost done. So now, I'm going to write a KCL here, or Kirchhoff current law. Effectively, I am going to say that the current true, uh, the resistor R, so this current, plus the I2 current should be, when the, both of them enters this node, should be equal to I out. So I'm going to write a Kirchhoff current law KCL at uh, output voltage node. So that says the I out is equal to I, I2 plus IR. Okay, keep I2, but then IR, the current through the small resistor, is simply voltage drop V3 minus V out divided by R. Now I'm going to use equation 4. So I2 substituting for V3 minus V out, uh, V3 minus V out from equation 4. So I'm going to just substitute that with this side. It will be V2 minus V1 and uh, plus Ri1 divide by R. So that will give me just simply I2 plus I1 plus V2 minus V1 R. Finally, as the last step, I'm going to use equation 3 that says the sum of the I1 plus I2 is simply, is simply V2 minus V1 divided by R. So I'm going to use equation 3, and I'm going to substitute for this guy. So it will be V2 minus V1 divided by R, and keep this one. So V2 minus V1 divided by small r. We are done. We started from I out. And we got these guys. So therefore, I can write as a summary, I out equal to V2 minus V1, or the difference of the two voltages at the input of the second stage, times 1 over R plus 1 over small r. Or effectively, it means V2 minus V1 divided by R in parallel with capital R. So that's the output current. So I'm going to write this. But then this is what we found for the output current. Now the interesting is we can now substitute for these two voltages. So that is equation 5 for the output. Now substituting from equations uh, 1 and 2 for the V1 and V2 at the input of the circuit. So remember V1 and V2 are the two voltages. V2, so we have... We have V2, and then we have V1. V1 is simply the voltage of Zener diode, and V2 is at the output of the first stage. So let's proceed then 
using equations 1 and 2 simply for substituting for these guys. So I am going to write using equations 1 and 2, I out is equal to, so V2 minus V1 is uh, 3 minus 3, and then it will be just IPDRP. So that's the delta. So I'm going to write it once. So it's uh, 3 volt plus IPDRP minus 3, and then divide by, so that 3 is basically V1. And this guy is just V2. Okay, finally, it's just uh, R parallel with, uh, so small letter R, uh, and then pa parallel with capital R, so lowercase r and uppercase r, and then we get finally uh, the R photodiode, so that would be the resistor for the potentiometer, this potentiometer at the input of the circuit, the variable control we have, and then on the numerator and then in the denominator we have lowercase r parallel with uppercase r, and then IPD. That's it. So we found the formula for the amplification in the circuit, which I'm going to summarize it here effectively in this uh, whole circuit. So what we got, I'm going to use a different color so that we, it's highlighted. I out is equal to, as was found, resistor for the potentiometer, divide by the lowercase r, this resistor, 1 kilo ohm, in parallel with the uppercase r, the 100 kilo ohm resistor nominal and times the current generated by the photodiode depending on the intensity of light that is uh, that is coming so okay so with that said this is the ultimate equation that we were chasing in this problem and uh, that solves the whole problem and by the way if you want to approximate that in this case because R, if, it, if the lowercase r is really 1 kilo ohm, and if the uppercase r uh, that is shown here is, for example, selected to be, say, um, 100 kilo ohm, then we can approximate that with just r. So if you have a, if you want to have, let me just move this 4 so that we have some space here. So if you want to approximate this whole thing, it's possible to rewrite it as approximately rp over lowercase r times IPD. And given that lowercase r is 1k, RP or the potentiometer resistor is 10k, so it means that the circuit effectively would be able to magnify or amplify the current generated by the photodiode by up to 10 times in this design, but it is completely depending on adjustable uh, value of the resistor that's selected. Okay, I hope that this example is helpful in terms of uh, showing how we can use just two op amps to uh, basically uh, have a photodiode amplifier and uh, combined with a current source current inverter. Thanks for watching.